motorcycle racing, a sport of passion, beautifully graphic and so obviously challenging. Few sports can match the physical requirements of motocross or the daring and finesse of Grand Prix racing. Quite simply, motorcycle racing is awesome. Professional motocross is definitely a youth sport. Most of the American championships are won by people in their early 20s. At 25, most riders have peaked and can look forward to having younger riders to follow. Bob Hanna at 27 is in the autumn of his career. At 20, David Bailey is in the spring of his. Both wanted to win the 250cc national championship. The Peter Starr Motorcycle Show is brought to you by Stroh's and Stroh Light, fire brewed for a smoother taste. And Chevrolet, Chevy trucks, nothing works like a Chevy truck. And Honda Motorcycles, Honda, follow the leader. We'll be right back with Peter Starr. The 1983 Supercross season unveiled what was perhaps the most potent one-two punch in racing history. Honda's number 11, David Bailey, a young, determined and supremely talented rider who tore up the tracks like a legend in the making. The second half of that combination was a legend already made. The winningest rider in motocross history, Bob Hanna. Together, they were the dominant force to reckon with in virtually every moto in the 1983 Supercross season. A season of rejoicing disaster and calamity. And lastly, a season which found David Bailey at the top of the point standings and the champion of Supercross. In only his second year on the professional circuit, David Bailey had arrived. Washougal, Washington, August 14, 1983. A beautiful sun-drenched day in the country for the 20,000 motocross fans in attendance. A chance to escape the city, the job, the daily routine, and enjoy some cold beer, good food, and world-class motocross racing. A perfect opportunity to kick back, chow down, and entertain your friends with a bad impersonation of Kojak. But for the top contenders, like Honda's number 11, David Bailey, there was a lot more at stake. Well, right now, rather than trying to protect the points lead, uh, <laughs> thinking about just going out there and treating this as the first race of the season, because with uh, three races left, anything can happen. Uh, right now, for me, the best thing to do is try to get some good starts and stay out of first turn crashes and uh, go as fast as I can, go 100%, and, and try to beat Bob and everybody else that's, that's out there. Try to win every moto I can. And, uh, I'd like to finish off the year with... Uh, Perfect score. Hello, Washougal, Washington. It's showtime. Going in for the whole shot. It's on the inside. Number 12, Honda's Bob Hurricane Hanna. Just to his left and coming around the outside line is privateer Kenny the Guard Sergeant number 750. The first 250 moto is on its way. Or is it? Out of the turn three melee, we've got Burnworth in first with Hannah right at his heels. The traffic jam is back at turn three, and Supercross champion David Bailey is right in the thick of it, while his teammate Hannah is way out in front of the pack, chasing Burnworth for the lead. Bailey is in dead last. This is exactly the situation he was trying to avoid. Over the whoop to doos here comes the hurricane. Bob Hanna and Burnworth is nowhere in sight. Hanna is completely alone in first place, and yet he's riding like the devil himself is chasing him. <laughs> Lapping a back marker who looks totally amazed that someone can ride that fast. The coals are hot, steam's up, and Hannah is pouring it on! Further back in the field, young David Bailey had battled his way into fourth place after a disastrous start. Although he was too far back to catch Bob Hannah and win this particular race, his ability to consistently finish in the top five for every event he entered would keep him in contention for the 250cc national championship and the overall point standings award, the AMA Super Series. 
Having already won the 1983 Supercross title in just his second year on the circuit, Bailey had a clear shot of winning motocross's first triple crown. David Bailey, the little professor, sheer guts and determination. But this moto is going to go to number 12, Bob Hurricane Hanna, winning his first race since breaking both wrists in a practice run in April. Oh, I got a good start. It was fairly easy for a while. I got kind of tired. I, didn't, uh, I haven't been on a bike in enough lately. It's a little warm out there for me. So I kind of dropped off the pace at the end. I figured I'd get a big, as big a lead as I could get, and then I could drop off at the end, and I did just that. I don't know what he was trying to do. Reflecting on the first moto, Bailey was not as contented with himself as was his teammate Bob Hanna. David had not enjoyed his first moto. Uh, I think his head was still at the starting line because he just didn't use his head, took me down and a few others and himself, and I had to come from way behind. There been a few things in the bike, and uh, just the way it goes. Rivalry, even amongst teammates, is a natural consequence of professional sports. Top riders like Bailey and Hannah are aware of it, and so are their fans. Bob Hannah! David Bailey! Bob Hannah! David Bailey! Bob Hannah! What you first for? David Bailey! Bob Hannah! The second moto at Washoe. Until the gate drops, everyone's tied for first. over Mount St. Helens, it's Johnson, number 49, Burnworth, 16, and Bad Weather Bob, number 12. This race will really test Hannah's endurance. At 26 years of age, he's an old, old man compared to most of these riders, and he's also been on the sidelines for several weeks following his crash in Gainesville. Look out! Hang in there, old fella! Burnworth and Hannah still duking it out in second and third behind Johnson in the lead. The race right now is for second place. If Burnworth lets up for a second, he'll be looking at the dirt roofs flying off of the Hurricane's rear tire. second into the air. Hannah stays airborne a split second longer, but he's got the inside line going into the hairpin. This is where Hannah's strength and guts usually pays big dividends. There he goes, pushing Bernward to the outside and smoking him. Lesson number one, never give Bob Hannah the inside line if you want to keep him behind you. Hannah's teammate David Bailey is pushing hard in fourth place. Once again, the little professor is consistently riding in the money. And right in front of him, Hannah and Burnworth are still slugging it out for a second behind Ricky Johnson. There's one thing you can say about this Washougal crowd. They sure enjoy a good race, and Hannah is giving them their money's worth. By the end of the second moto, Bailey would once again prove how consistency can pay off. Unlike his teammate, Hannah, who rides with an almost reckless abandon, Bailey is the epitome of smooth, low-risk technique. In their post-race interviews, Bailey and Hannah also display another difference. Bailey, by Hannah's standards, Still a relative newcomer to the professional circuit, gets very much involved in the emotions of winning and losing. Hannah, on the other hand, who already has six national championships to his credit, is very much the seasoned veteran, taking in stride the mechanical difficulties which caused him to drop out of the moto he potentially could have won. Oh, I got a good start. Felt a little tired. Just went as fast as I had to go. <laughs> Didn't even want to go that fast. Still tired. And. Uh, started missing gears. Figured they're gonna have a little problem, but not a major one. And then uh, probably broke a tooth off the gearbox or something and just seized it up. Just tired, real tired. Hands tired. 